Hello and welcome. This time we're talking about Harvard architecture. It's not building architecture, it's a computer architecture. A reference model for computers. It was done in 1944. There was an electromechanic computer called Mark I from IBM and this was some joint venture or, or, or combined forces, let's call, with of IBM and, and the University of Harvard. This is why it's called Harvard architecture. Yeah. Last time we talked about the von Neumann architecture. Yeah. Just to be, to remind you, the von Neumann architecture, it had some memory. Yeah. It had some control unit. And it had some arithmetic and logic unit. Yeah. I'm not taking into account now uh, the input and output units. And they are all to tied together by a bus system, the data bus system. Yeah. A control buses and so on. However, the control unit is fetching from the memory the next instruction yeah, it's decoding its instruction. If it needs uh, operands, it's fetching operands, yeah, giving this whole data to the arithmetic logic unit. The arithmetic logic unit is writing back to the memory. Yeah. They all share the same data bus. Okay? And this, I said, is the so-called bottleneck of the von Neumann architecture. Yeah. The Harvard architecture tries to, to overcome this. Uh, the Harvard architecture has two types of memory. Uh, so this is the von Neumann. And the Harvard architecture has two types of memories. Uh, there is the data memory. And there's the program memory with the instructions. There's the control unit. And there's the arithmetic logic unit. I always say, oh, alu, arithmetic logic unit. They are communicating to each other, and now there are suddenly two possible ways. Data memory, program memory. Suddenly the program, the instructions, do not share the bus system with the data. This is some benefits. The benefits are, this memory can be protected. The ALU is not writing back in this memory. Yeah? So whatever is inside there can be a ROM, can be a, not a writable thing. Yeah? This is protected, memory protection. So viruses are, have it more difficult in this architecture. Yeah? Also attacks are more difficult in this architecture. Yeah? Also the the broads of these buses, of this data bus and this data bus, they do not have to be the same. Here can be 64 bit, for instance, and here only can be 16. Yeah? How much is necessary? Yeah? Here, they have to be the same. Yeah? This saves money yeah? because it saves chip area simply. Yeah? Uh, and of course, this bottleneck is not given. The data and the program memory can deliver at the same time, so these usually are faster things. Yeah. The downsides of this architecture are that this program here, it cannot be altered too easy. Yeah. So this means a dynamically loaded program, parts of program, yeah, which should only be loaded if necessary. In Windows, they are called DLLs, dynamically, dynamically linked libraries. Yeah, it's not easily possible here. Yeah, and also, if 
I have, if a program is small and I have a huge data, I cannot just share memory and say, okay, I have a small program. Here the memory is shared. And if I have a small program, I can have more, more data and vice versa. Yeah? This is not possible here. If something is full, then it's full. Yeah? So these are the two things. Modern days computers, they do use a combination of two things. Externally, they still, all right, the Harvard. It's clear. Externally, they use the von Neumann architecture. But internally, in the processes, there are caches and there are different caches for programs, there are different caches for data. And those caches, the cache, meanwhile, there are three levels of caches in, the, in our computer. So there is now more memory inside the computer, which the first computers ever had in their whole things yeah now inside the central processing unit yeah and internally they use the benefits of the Harvard architecture yeah and externally they work like a von Neumann computer yeah? so they are somehow uh, a combination of both and in between this transition is done by some clever cache management uh, this is how modern computers are working this is usually The Intel yeah, x86 architecture is a von Neumann architecture. Yeah. And here, an uh, example was the 68000 of Motorola. Yeah. 68000 processor family. This was a Harvard architecture. Also, where a lot of small, small controllers, like the Arduino, for instance, the IT Mega chips and so on, they are Harvard architecture. Yeah. This is why you maybe have noticed in the download windows of the, our Arduino, there is a uh, written program memory and data memory. This is just because this yeah? it's, it's Harvard architecture. And also strings and so on. It's not that easy if you have constant values. Yeah? If you have to want to print out something, this is usually located in data memory. And the, the, if the data memory is, is low, you tend to put them in program memory because you want to change them anyway. But however, it's not that easy because it's loaded as data and so on. Yeah, there needs to be some work around. Yeah. So these are the two possible architectures for computers. Not the two possible, the two mainly referenced yeah? and the two in use. Like I said, internally often nowadays computers have an architecture externally the behavior for Neumann architecture. Yeah? Internally we have multi-core and multi-pipelining and whatever technologies are inside to speed those things up. And like I said, interesting is that in principle they still work the same and just try to parallelize things and to, to squeeze out the last possible optimization, make things smaller and uh, and we increase power tremendously, but the working principles, this architecture, still is pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah. That's it for computer architecture. Next time we're talking about this thing here, the central processing unit or the combination of of uh, alu and 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 thing yeah first a little bit about the modern computers i already touched some things about this and then we are going to look into into those things here how is this operating and how the software finally is influencing the behavior this is then our goal in the next videos for this video Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.